So let's talk a little bit about this physicality that y'all had to embark upon in Wolf. I want to talk about what the training was like with Terry and how you um, went about inhabiting that animalistic side of yourself in order to inhabit these roles. And I'll start with Lily first. Well, I have to say it was an absolute honor working with Terry Notary. You know, his his work is so fascinating and he's so, so good at what he does. And so I think it's like finding our own comfort in those movements then helped us connect to like our characters' comfort, our characters' vulnerability, our characters like wanting, like need to feel safe and need to feel protected. And so I think that, you know, watching the two of those things kind of go hand in hand was uh, was really informative for the both of us. My name is Lily Rose Depp and I play Wildcat in Wolf. My initial thoughts when I read the script were that it was just unlike anything I had ever read before. The universe that was you know depicted in the script was super unique and and surreal and that was really interesting to me and i was super intrigued by and, and moved by by wildcat and just super drawn to her and 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 really excited to to engage on the project and uh, i also just thought that it could be a super you know creative challenge in the in the best way you know learning how to do animal movement and 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 also just be a part of this beautiful love story which it ends up being and you know just all the complexities of the character and of the story um were really really exciting to me and there was just so much depth in all of it and you know i just think it's it's really rare to read a script that's that's that kind of meaty right off the bat and i was just really really excited um by the prospect of of uh, of, of working on it wildcat is um a girl who has been at Trueu at the clinic for quite a long time. She has a very kind of particular, quite maternal, you know, kind of almost mother-daughter relationship with one of the doctors, um, which kind of sets her apart from all of the other patients. She's almost like kind of a, like kind of a sort of ghost of the place in the sense that she's just been here for so long. Her most of her life has been spent here, and she's seen so many patients come and go. Um, and since she was a child, she has kind of retreated into this projection of, of being a wildcat um, as a sort of coping mechanism for the things that she's gone through in her life and I think when Jacob enters the clinic then it kind of turns the very um, safe haven that she's been living in you know upside down. Well George and Lily Rose we've just met your characters on screen and experienced your very embodied and layered performances can you take turns telling us about your experiences with the film. Yeah, I think, I mean, I couldn't agree with more with everything that, that George is saying. And I think, you know, I was, I was really attracted initially to the, you know, obviously all of the emotion that was so apparent upon like the first reading of the script. And I just, I mean, I just love the story. I thought it was so, so unique. And I thought that it was so, um, I just think it's rare to come across, you know, characters that are so, so, so meaty and have so many layers that are begging to be, you know, uh, fleshed out and and it's just was really interesting creatively but I think I wasn't even prepared when I read the script and fell in love with it for just how uh emotional the work was going to be and I don't know if you feel the same way George but I feel like in working on the character you know with Nat and with George and, and with Terry like a lot of the movement work that we did was you know obviously there's like the things that you would think of like finding out figuring out how to walk like a cat or like a a, a wolf or you know the kind of technical animal movement and sound and things like that. But I think that there's something so inherently um, emotional when, you, when you're connecting to that kind of like primal side of yourself. And before we even got into any of the actual movement stuff, there was a lot of, you know, breathing work and a lot of connection work. We did a lot of like eye contact exercises, George and I, and like things like that, that, um, that I'll carry with me forever. Like not only in other um, films and other roles, but just in general, like it taught me so much about, uh, about just presence and being present with yourself and present in every moment that you're experiencing and I think that that's something that these kids all all have everybody who's in you know every character that we meet is is uh is there's something just very very present about all of them because they're so um so fragile and so in their own worlds that they're just very uh they, they kind of can't help but live in the moment I feel like and uh and yeah I think that's a very special aspect of our of our story and and everything that I felt was so special about the project when I first encountered it was like, you know, times a thousand once we actually shot it. It was really, really a really special experience. 
I have a question for all three of you, and that's if you could discuss what the most challenging scene for you individually was in the film. Me too. I think also it was it was beautiful to see that scene kind of like transform over time because it was kind of one of the first, I mean, I guess not concretely, but it was kind of one of the first things that we rehearsed together was like, not necessarily that scene, but kind of like an animal discovery mm -hmm. moment between the two of them that kind of turned into that scene. But from the moment that we started rehearsing it to the moment that we actually shot it, we'd been through so much, you know, done so many of these like improv sessions and shots and things and everything. And so it was kind of beautiful to see it evolve and then become what you see in the movie, which is, you know, fueled with like weeks of, uh, you know, spending so much time together and rehearsing and improving and all these things. And, and we realized at the end, it's kind of more of a, like, it's almost like an abstract uh, ballet of sorts, or something like that. And that's, uh, that's, yeah, I love that scene too. It's really special. Well, we've met you as performers in the film and you as a director, Natalie, I'd love to know what inspires you outside of this film as artists. I agree. I think when you're like, you know, I guess in, in the business of like imitating life, you know, in, in art, you can't help but be inspired by life, whether that's your own life and <clears throat> things that happen to you. And you're like, wow, I didn't know that I could ever, you know, feel this way or something. Maybe there'll, there'll be like somewhere where I could represent this feeling artistically or something. I think that uh, I, for one, feel very lucky that I'm, that I have a job that allows me to funnel my actual you know, emotions into uh, into art. I think we're very lucky to be able to be like, you know, to draw from whatever has happened to us in our lives or whatever is happening to other lives around us that, that affect us, you know, to, to have a um, a real place to kind of like funnel that into and, and to make art out of it. So definitely like, you know, anything that happens in life can be a source of inspiration, even then, you know, stories that you hear about or things that happen to friends and, uh, and um, and you know, yeah, good movies, good music, good books, and uh, and also I th I'm really inspired a lot by like rewatching movies that I was obsessed with as a kid, rewatching them as an adult, and you have a weird like new perspective on it. I find very uh, inspiring. Which is, what is your favorite animal and why? Yeah, uh, I, I I I'm gonna have to follow George and say cats because because I've never you know I've it's the animal I've I've done the most work on and gotten to know the most, and I and I. And I do relate to cats in a in a big way, and I think that if I was an animal, you're I'd obsessed cat. with cats. You're I'm obsessed when, with I first, I... when I wanted to cast her, like I looked at her Instagram. It's like her cuddling pumpkin, like all have, the way. There. I think he's right there. Actually, I have a cat. He's oh, he's over there. You can't see him, but I have one too. So I'm 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 partial to cats. Yeah, cats. Lily Rose, how how have the humiliation and intimidation tactics that Wildcat, you know, in witnesses? Um, kind of shaped her to sort of live her life out of fear? Um, and how does that impact her decision making throughout the film? I mean, I think Wildcat's experience at the clinic is very different than all of the different than all of the other patients in that she's been there since she was a little girl. And she's kind of watched all of these different patients come and go and, and, and come and go. And, you know, throughout the years, she has grown up, but she hasn't really evolved because she hasn't been given those tools, uh, you know, by the doctors and the people around her to feel like she has the 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 skill set to survive in the outside world as an independent person. Um, you know, so I think that the point at which we meet her in the film, she's kind of questioning a lot of things about her existence and her place in the world, whether or not she has a place in the world, whether or not outside the clinic, you know, there's a, a space, a safe space that she can occupy out there. Um, and and I, I very much think that she's a character, like a, a person that's driven by by fear, fear of the unknown, fear of uh, you know uh, of of things that she's suffered through before. Um, and I and I think that when she meets Jacob and sees this kind of like you know very genuine, very truthful wildness in him, she's fascinated by that kind of. Uh, you know, by that, by that quality that I think she doesn't have in herself and maybe even would, would like to have. Yeah. Last but not least, I would just love to surprise you about yourself that you discovered, um, on this journey. I think it taught me a lot. Like, I don't know if it was like a revelation about like, oh, I I'm this way or something, but I think it was more, um, it gave me really like the gift of freedom and of, you know, like, like dropping my like I don't know I think and I was talking about this a little bit earlier but like you know I wasn't expecting the the physical preparation um both with like you know Nat and George and also just like on my own but with our our movement coach Terry Notary who's incredible um 
I wasn't expecting the work to be as vulnerable emotionally as it was. And I think like seeing how the physical preparation and the emotional preparation kind of went hand in hand informed a lot about my my performance and I think George's performance as well and our dynamic together. Um, and I think it just taught me a lot about how I don't know, like to lead with uh, to, to to lead with like courage and with and, and just to kind of leave any sort of fear or any um, self-consciousness at the door when I take projects on in the future. Like it was it was the really the, the most kind of um, free and creative that I've honestly ever felt in my career, like up until that that point. And, and so I think it just taught me to lead uh, to lead with with, you know, with fearlessness as much as I as much as I could, because that. Um, is what made me feel the most connected to my character is just like leaving all of that at the door. And I think all, all of that obviously is aided by, um, you know, being so being surrounded by such good company that made me feel so safe to uh, create in, in, in such a safe uh, and loving space. Uh, but yeah, I think just like I, I really moved forward with like, you know, I can just uh, just let it all just let it all go sometimes, you know. <laughs>